Our assets are frozen? Why are we being accused of running a Ponzi scheme? That's not it at all. So what are you gonna do for this family? I don't want to end up like you. She won Lorenzo dead. It was Monet. You fucking knew. Fuck don't you ever put your fucking hands on me again. You can't refuse. That's want somebody to shoot your moms. What the fuck are you talking about? What the fuck are you gonna do? Shoot me with Yaz and Big Mama right outside? Don't worry. I got a silencer. They ain't gonna hear nothing. What's up, Power Fans and YouTube? It's your boy Nino, and I'm back with another Power video. In this video, I'll be talking about episode 9, Tommy's return, who possibly hit Tariq, and where Tasha could be, the Tahada children and their moves, Britain's first buddy, and many more. And of course, if you are new to my channel, you're welcome. Kindly hit the subscribe button, like, share, leave your thoughts in the comment section. If you have already subscribed, Thanks for the support. Now let's get straight into the topics. Before I start, I want you to know that there are no spoilers in this video and also you have to be careful in the comment section not to read spoilers because people have watched the leak video already and are intentionally giving spoilers. So if you don't like spoilers like me, just be careful when reading comments under this video or any of my other videos. Now, I must say episode 9 was very great. I got angry to see Jenny crying over Sack's body as if she didn't know that this could happen. Sounding all defensive about Sack's now like she didn't refuse him protection minutes before he was ambushed by Theo. Now, Blanca made a statement and I want to put that to you as well. Sax was up to his eyeballs in dirt. Let's not pretend that he's some kind of hero. Is Sax a hero or he made a dirty choice and got what he deserved? Let me know what you also think in the comment section about that. Now, after watching this episode, I now understand why people who watch the leaks couldn't resist to flood YouTube comments with spoilers. I must say it was damn good, but let's finish with Sax first. I knew this guy wouldn't die without leaving a mark. His obsession with Tariq and the St. Patrick's made him have one of the best contingency plans ahead of his death. He started by sending Monet a letter claiming Tariq was the reason her family became what it is now and that Tariq is working with the feds and Monet sent Diana to find out and she ended up finding the police report that says Lorenzo was at Zeke's crime scene. Now, my first question is how did Sack's letter got to Tommy, knowing that Tommy is dead? I have a theory on this and I'll break it down for you soon. But before that, wow. Seeing two beats, Tommy, Yaz and Tasha was a great reunion if you ask me. I didn't expect all these characters in one episode. I can't imagine how episode 10 will look. Now, Sax is making ghost moves in grief. He sent Monet a letter with Tasha's address in it, but there is something not adding up. Tommy was in Chicago and Monet never left town to look for Tommy in Chicago to give him this letter. Matter of fact, Sax doesn't even know that Tommy is still alive, so I can only assume that Sax sent this letter to Monet so she can have it against Tariq in case she needs it. We all know Sax hated Tariq very much and wanted him behind bars. Now, however, this letter managed to get to Tommy must be through someone to him. Now, you remember the night Monet saved Tariq from Tommy at the graveyard, right? I'm sure before the plan for Monet to come back him up, he already told Monet how badly Tommy wants to kill his mother. Now, Drew and Diana also came to pick them up at the location that night, so I'm pretty sure that they knew the Tommy and Tasha story. That is why they were also part of the plan. Now, before I come to how Tommy might have gotten this letter, I want to analyze this first. In the Tahares right now, who is beefing with Tariq now? For me, I think the children hate both Tariq and Monet now more than anything because of their father's death. And I don't think Tariq has stepped on Monet enough for her to snitch on his mother to Tommy, knowing Tommy will kill Tasha on sight. So I believe Kane, Drew and Diana are bitter about their father's death now that if they want to make Tariq feel the pain they are going through, the best option for them is to snitch on his mother to the only person looking for her to kill, and that is Tommy. Let me know what you also think in the comment section. Now back to the question, how on earth did Tommy in Chicago got this information? Now, if you pay attention to Tommy, he said Monet dropped him a message. Monet Tahada, she dropped me a message. Now, there is no way Monet can magically know where Tommy is and the drop in his statements here means she left the message with someone or somewhere for him. And who can the Tahadas have access to in New York that is linked to Tommy? Kate, Tommy's mother. Apart from Kate, there isn't anyone who can have access to Tommy in New York and she'll be the only one he can trust enough to leave Chicago to New York, knowing very well that when it comes to New York, he is dead long ago. Now, this is my theory. I feel that Tahara kids sent this letter to Kate 
and Kate made it available to Tommy. And the way Sax planned his post-death, I'm sure the letter included the location to Tasha. So if you take a second look at Sax before he was ambushed by Theo, he said, I know where Tasha and Yaz are. And if I die, that information does too. In other words, Sax is saying that he knows where Tasha and his sister are. So if he dies, that information does too. In this case, Sax wasn't saying the information would die with him. He was rather saying that since he knows where they are, if he dies, people will know too. So Sax intentionally leaked Tasha's location and set himself up in a way that if he dies, all this information will be sent to the people who can use this against Eric. So Sax wasn't saying he was the only one who knew where Tasha was like I initially thought. So let me know what you also think in the comment section, but please, no spoilers, we beg. Now, who could be brave enough or trustworthy enough to do these letter distributions for Sax? Clearly, it wasn't Jenny since she also received one, and I definitely know it wasn't Blanca. The only person I think was Sax's letter distributor is Riley. She's the only one who can possibly run such an errand for her uncle who covered her for so many times. But then, let me know what you also think in the comment section how Sax managed to distribute these letters when he died. Now, moving on, I want to talk about the ending scene. <laughs> Tasha is missing and someone hit Tariq from the back. Now, was Tommy also hit? Because it was clear that Tariq was going to shoot Tommy before he got knocked out. But then, my question is, who possibly hit Tariq? It can't be Yas simply because of her height. The only person I can think of is Tasha herself. She was the only one behind her son. Now, despite Tommy wants to kill Tasha so badly because of one, snitching on him for killing Ghost and for killing his love, Lakeisha, I believe Tasha still love and care about Tommy and wouldn't want Tariq to kill Ghost and Tommy at the same time. That would be too much for him as a kid and even as his character. Just imagine Tariq kills Tommy. People will beat Michael Rene Jr. if they see him in public. The show will even die at once. So I feel it was Tasha who knocked Tariq out and possibly Tommy took her away. What I can also think of is both Tommy and Tasha fled the scene as to if they are both together or not, we'll soon find out in the next episode or the finale. Or probably Tasha ran away from Tommy because Tommy will shoot her anyways. Let me know what you also think in the comment section and still please and please and please no spoilers in the comment section. Now, moving on in my last video, I stated that the Tahares are going to wipe out the Castillos in their bar, an idea Kane initially wanted to do when he had Lorenzo in his pocket. Which is why we take them out. Make what's theirs ours, then go after the rest of the barrels. Kill Frank's sons, Guillermo, Gordo, Gilberto. Nigga, I know they fucking name. And I stated that the only option for Drew is to go according to Kane's initial idea to wipe them out before they rather come after them. I knew very well that Evelyn would not die without snitching on Monet. And since Goro died with the secret, Evelyn is the only one who can say something to expose Monet, so I wasn't shocked when she ratted on Monet before dying. Anyways, rest in peace to the Castillos. Now, I also stated in one of my videos after Lorenzo died that they will blame Tariq for having a hand in Lorenzo's death. Now, after Diana finding these files in Tariq's room and the way they have figured it all out, trust me, I strongly believe that the whole Tahara siblings are going to go against Tariq for especially his involvement in their father's death. So drop your thoughts and theories in the comment section below and I reiterate, no spoilers, please, no spoilers. Now, in one of my videos, I explained the sec and stated what will happen if they get to know the dealings of the Western Holdings. And I stated that if sec gets to know this before RSJ, Monet and Terry gets their money, then they will all lose their investment. And like I said, a Ponzi scheme busted by sec means they will freeze all assets, freeze all accounts, and the Westerns will go from rich to empty. Now, it is funny how Braden finally has a reason to really sell drugs to survive. We will see if Trace will join him to make money or not. Now, what this means to the Westerns is that all their privileges are gone. I wonder how they will come out of this. Now, I've observed something about the Westerns. It's funny because I don't have any backing to it. It's just that it's an observation I made. Have you also realized that Braden and Uncle Lucas have the same mentality, which is different from Trace? and Robert. Well, I won't be surprised Lucas slept with his brother's wife and Braden was the result. Lucas is crazy enough to do things like that since he was able to do it with Kiki as well. Then maybe Braden will find out one day that Robert wasn't his father but Lucas. Then we are possibly going back to the son killing father storyline without knowing, just like young Kanan almost did with Detective Howard and Tariq shot Ghost. 
Anyways, this may not be true, so don't dwell on it too much. In every family, there is always a stubborn kid like Braden. I just find the Westerns funny and suspicious, that's all. Let me know what you also think in the comment section about this. Now, I don't know if you have noticed, but after Braden finally caught his first body, he has started changing and I feel Braden has a reason now to stop hesitating to kill someone since he was able to kill his own uncle. Now, let's talk about Cain and Ify. Now, this encounter between Cain and Ify when he visited her, I feel Cain was up to something else when he was convincing her to flip on Tari. If Ife had agreed to flip on Tari, Cain will know that she can potentially flip on him too and his family. I don't know, but I feel Cain was just pushing Ife to see how good she can hold information down. Because come to think of it, Kane should be smart enough to know that if Efe flips on Tari and he is arrested, he can also bring him down and the whole Tahara family down too. Considering the crime Kane committed in front of Tari, killing of the cops Ramirez and Jabari too and so forth. So to me clearly, Kane was testing Efe with that flip on Tariq thing. Now, Efe is inside and Lauren is outside for now. I said for now because in my last video, I stated that the only way Lauren can leave is not to testify against Efe. Because if she does, it will only make her wanted by Ify or Kim. So if you ask me, Lauren's best bet is not to flip on Ify, but rather make the case a ridiculous one, just like how Braden turned his back against Jenny in court when she was trying to pin everything on Tariq. So Lauren will have to make this case a foolish case by not testifying in court, and that is the only way she can have her whole life back. Now, this may not come easy, but Tariq will have to play a major role by convincing Lauren about the danger she is in testifying. Then he will make a deal with the Taharas, especially Kane, not to come after Lauren. So a good agreement between these three will keep all of them safe, including Ife as well. If Ife is innocent, I guess she will also be released as well. And if I am Tariq, like I stated in my last video, knowing the tension between him and Ife, he can use this opportunity to take the picture of Norma's daughter from her in return for her freedom. At the end of the day, everybody gets what they want and Lauren gets to leave to see her parents and family again. I don't know about you, but let me know what you also think in the comment section on all what I said in episode 9. For me, this was a very great episode and I can't wait for the season finale. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, turn on your notification bell to get notified on my next video, like, share, most importantly, leave your thoughts in the comment section. Catch you in my next video. It's your boy Nino. Thanks for watching.